All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his glorious book, Among the believers are men who have been true to the covenant they had made with Allah. Some of them have fulfilled their pledge with their lives, others are waiting their turn. They have never changed their commitment in the least. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that our master Prophet Muhammad is a slave and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow him till the day of judgment. Believing in Allah the Almighty is one of the highest blessings that Allah grants to humans. As he the Almighty says, But Allah has endeared faith to you, making it appealing in your hearts. And he has made disbelief, rebelliousness, and disobedience detestable to you. Those are the ones rightly guided. It goes without saying that Ramadan is the month of true faith. This is why the verses on fasting in the Quran begin with the call upon believers. As Allah says, O believers, fasting is prescribed for you as it was for those before you. So perhaps you will become mindful of Allah. True faith means to believe in all what Allah has revealed and to surrender to His will. A well-known hadith which narrates the Jibreel visited the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him explains the reality of faith which should be present in the heart of every believer. The Prophet peace be upon him asked Jibreel about faith and Jibreel replied to believe in Allah, his angels, his books, his messenger, the day of judgment, the Qadr or predestination, the good of it and the bad of it. Therefore, faith is not a word to utter, rather it is a belief of the heart reflected in one's actions. Allah says, only they are true believers whose hearts fill up with awe when the name of God is mentioned, and their faith is further strengthened when his messages are read out to them, and those who place their trust in their Lord. They are those who establish prayer and donate from what we have provided for them. It is they who are the true believers. The Prophet said, A Muslim is the one from whose tongue and hands the Muslims are safe, and the believer is the one with whom people trust their blood and their wealth. However, those whose manners and actions deviate from the commands of Allah have gone astray from the path of faith. In this regard, the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, The adulterer is not a believer at the moment when he is committing adultery. And the wine drinker is not a believer at the moment when he is drinking wine. And the thief is not a believer at the moment he is stealing. The Prophet peace be upon him also stated that one is not a believer if he harms his neighbor or when he eats food at night while knowing that his neighbor spends the night in hunger, as these actions are contrary to faith. The Prophet peace be upon him said, By Allah he is not a believer. By Allah he is not a believer. By Allah he is not a believer. He was asked, Who is that, O Messenger of Allah? He said, One whose neighbor does not feel safe from his evils. The Prophet also said, He is not a believer who eats to the full, while knowing that his neighbor spends night in hunger. It is true that faith prevents one from infringing upon the rights of others attacking them and purifies one's heart of hatred, envy, selfishness, treachery, betrayal, and corruption. It is faith which purifies one's morals, behavior, and conduct. True faith is reflected in one's dealings with, the, with all creatures of Allah, in the form of mercy with humans, animals, and even inanimate objects, for seeking the pleasure of Allah. Allah says, and they give food despite their desire for it, to the poor, the orphaned, and to the captive, saying to themselves, we feed you only for the sake of Allah, seeking neither reward nor thanks from you. Faith, faith is like a tree whose roots are firm and whose branches reach out in the sky. If the roots are strong, it will give fruit. True fasting stems from such faith to fill one's soul with peace and tranquility and makes him mindful of Allah. This is why a true fasting person does not lie, as fasting and lying cannot go together. 
Fasting is based on being totally mindful of Allah the Almighty in private and, and in public spheres, while lying is the most noticeable signs of hypocrisy. Thus, it totally contradicts the very reality of fasting. So, a, pers a person is either fasting or lying. Therefore, our Prophet, peace be upon him, says, Whoever does not give up forged speech and evil actions and does not abandon foolishness, Allah is not in need of him leaving food and drink. Also, when the Prophet was asked, Can the believer be a coward? He said, Yes. He was again asked, Can the believer be a miser? He said, Yes. He was asked again, Can the believer be a liar? He said, No. Believing in Allah has a taste and sweetness that only the people of contentment whose hearts are filled with faith will experience. The Prophet said, Whoever is pleased with Allah as his Lord and Islam as his religion and Muhammad as his Prophet, then he has tasted the sweetness of faith. And also said, There are three qualities who have, whoever has them will taste the sweetness of faith. To love Allah and his messenger, peace be upon him, more than anyone else, to love a slave of Allah only for the sake of Allah, and to abhor returning to infidelity after Allah has saved him from it, as he would abhor to be thrown into fire. Moreover, faith and good manners are dependent on each other. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The dearest and closest of you to me on the day of resurrection will be those who are best in behavior and the humble of people. It is those who like people and people like them. No good is in one who does not like others and others do not like him. Faith is light and worship is light. Whoever tastes the sweetness of faith and worship will know only forgiveness, ease and good treatment. So he will not be arrogant and will not behave badly or deal with others in haughtiness he who has these qualities the prophet peace be upon him said when any one of you is observing fasting he should neither indulge in obscene language nor should he raise his voice and if anyone reviles him or tries to quarrel with him he should say i am a fasting person every mindful person has to realize that he may not enter paradise because of his worship but he may enter it to, due to his good manners, noble behavior, and good treatment with people. Regarding this, the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, A person from amongst the people who lived before you, who called to account by Allah on the day of resurrection. No good deeds were found in his credit except being a rich man who had financial dealings with people, and he used to command his servants to show leniency to those who were in a straightened circumstances. Upon this, Allah the Exalted says, I am more entitled to this attribute, so waive his faults. However, we affirm that true faith is a lie that Allah puts in the hearts of his slave, which gives them wisdom and certainty. Anas ibn Malik narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, once came out and met Haritha ibn al numan al-Ansari and asked him, How are you, Haritha? Haritha said, O Messenger of Allah, I am a true believer. The Prophet said, For everything there is a reality. So what's the reality of what you, what you have said? He said, O Messenger of Allah, I turned away from the world. I have stayed up late at night in worship. I have made myself thirsty in days of fasting. Now, as if I see the throne of my Lord, and it is like as if I see the people of heaven visiting each other in heaven, and I hear the howling of the people of the hell in hellfire. The Prophet said, You have realized the truth, so keep on that path. You are a servant whom Allah has heightened his heart with faith. Faith is of various branches that should be adhered to by Muslims. In this regard, Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Faith has over 70 branches, or over 60 branches, the uppermost of which is the declaration that no one has the right to be worshipped by Allah, and the least of which is the removal of a harmful object from the roots. 
and modesty is a branch of faith. Also, when a man asked Al Hassan al Basri, may Allah be pleased with him, are you a believer? He replied, Faith is of two kinds. So if you are asking me about belief in Allah, His angels, scriptures, messengers, and paradise, the hell, the resurrection, and holding people accountant before Allah for their deeds, I am a believer. Yet if you are asking me about the saying of Allah Most High, the believers are only those who, when Allah's name is mentioned, their hearts become fearful, and when his verses are re recited to them, it increases them in faith, and upon their Lord they rely. The ones who establish prayer, and from what we have provided them, they spend. Those are the believers. Truly, I do not know whether I am of them or not. True belief provides the person with security and safety, and good life cannot be realized but through it. Allah glorified as He says, Whoever does righteousness, whether male or female, while he is a believer, will surely cause him to live a good life. He the exalted also says, Those who have believed and whose hearts are assured by the remembrance of Allah. Unquestionably, by the remembrance of Allah, hearts are assured. Impressive are actually the following verses of poetry. If faith is vanished, security is undermined, and a person with no religion is dead. And whoever is satisfied with life away from religion, he and death become two companions. With that said, I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds. I bear witness that there is no God deserving to be worshipped by Allah and that our Master Prophet Muhammad is a slave and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his family companions, and upon those who follow him till the day of judgment. Muslim brothers, as far Ramadan as is the month of faith, it is also the month of building men. In truth, fasting is a school from which men graduate. Commenting on fasting, Ahmad Shawqi said, Fasting is a legitimate abstention, a kind of cultivation through hunger, and an act of showing humiliation and surrender to Allah. Every religious duty implies wisdom. The apparent aspect of fasting may be seen as inflicting torture. Yes, its essence truly implies mercy, provokes compassion, urges others to give charity, chatters ignorance, teaches patience, and establishes righteousness until a person feels the bitterness of hunger and is deprived from the means of enjoyment. He truly knows what deprivation is and how bitter it is. The one who carefully reads the noble Quran knows for certain that manhood only realized by people who meet its requirements which includes being true to the covenant with Allah without any alteration, corruption, or deviation. Allah Most High says, All the believers are men who are true to the covenant which they made with Allah. So of them he is he who accomplished his vow, and of them is he who yet waits, and they have not changed in the least. Also, true men are those who sell their souls and properties to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, a thing which is embodied in sacrificing one's self and property for the sake of religion, or home or honor, to get the contentment of Allah who says, Surely Allah has bought of the believers their persons and their property for this, that they shall have the garden, they fight in Allah's way, so they slay and are slain, a promise which is binding on him in the Torah, the Injil, and the Quran, and who is more faithful to his covenant than Allah. Rejoice therefore in the pledge which you have made. And that's the almighty achievement. Ramadan is the month where mosques are full of worshippers, day and night, which is one of the most essential factors in building characters and men. Addressing his prophet peace be upon him, Allah glory be to him said, O oh, you have wrapped up in your garment. Rise to pray the night except a little, half of it or lessen it a little. 
or add to it and recite the Quran as it ought to be recited surely will make you to light upon you a way word surely the rising by night is the firmest way to treat and the best corrective of speech and in houses which Allah has permitted to be exalted and that his name may be remembered in them there glorify him therein in the mornings and the evenings men whom neither merchandise nor selling diverts them from the remembrance of Allah and the keeping up of prayer and the giving of the poor weight they fear, fear a day in which the hearts and eyes shall turn about while describing the dwellers of the paradise he most high says they used to sleep but little in the night and in the morning they asked forgiveness and their sides draw away from their beds they call upon their lord in fear and in hope and they sp spend out of what we have given them so no soul knows what is hidden for them of that which will refresh their eyes a reward what they did Offering worship to Allah at night is one of these acts of worship we should be keen on, especially in the last 10 days of Ramadan, so as to, to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him. It is reported that the Prophet used to offer more acts of worship in these days. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, With the start of the last 10 days of Ramadan, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, used to tighten his waist that is to keep away from his wives and he used to stay up praying all night and he would also wake his wives to pray and recite the Quran the, the statement tighten his waist indicates that the texts more acts of worship in these days other scholars yet believe that it means that Prophet peace be upon him used to keep away from women during these days in the same connection, Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, The Prophet of Allah, peace be upon him, used to offer prayers and sleep during the first 20 days of Ramadan. Yet, when it is the last 10 days, he used to exert more efforts and to tighten his waist. In another narration, she pleased with her, said, The Messenger of Allah used to strive more in worship during Ramadan than he strove in any other time of the year and he would devote himself more in the worship of Allah in the last ten nights of Ramadan than he strove in the earlier part of the month Ramadan is the month that builds men through curbing their dreams of self achieving serenity, stern conscience, cultivating manners, raising more and more humanitarian values as well as the best of ethics that organize man behavior and makes him on the straight path in all of his affairs O Lord accept from us surely you are the hearing the knowing grant us repentance for you you are the oft returning the most merciful